During the Christmas season, family, friends, and long-standing traditions supersede the everyday routines that we have grown accustomed to throughout the previous year. Since I was a child, my favorite Christmas tradition is watching the Charlie Brown Christmas special. It is my favorite because it incorporates love on so many distinct levels. I've watched it every year from my formative years at my childhood home in New Jersey, surrounded by my parents and three siblings, to my time as a parent, surrounded by my wife, Wendy, and our three children, Grace, Allie, and Connor. Charlie Brown is our yearly treat. It incorporates 22 minutes that balances the frailty of the materialistic nature of the human circumstance with the hope and love that we glean from each other through the spirit of the Christmas season. I bet we've all seen the special. Charlie Brown is depressed about the commercialization of Christmas, something still identifiable today more than 50 years after it first aired. He is asked to become the director of the school Christmas play. He accepts, and in traditional Charlie Brown fashion, it does not go as intended. We all do make mistakes, and Charlie Brown makes a seemingly colossal one when he and Linus travel to a neighborhood Christmas tree lot. They want to find a Christmas tree, and they find a broad selection of gorgeous, sometimes ostentatious trees. Then, right there in the middle of the lot, they see it. A sad, lonely, feeble tree. That sad, lonely, feeble tree that calls out to Charlie Brown. Linus warns his best friend not to buy the tree, but Charlie Brown responds, all it needs is a little love. Linus and Charlie Brown walk back to school with the tree, and Charlie Brown places the tree on the piano. A few needles fall, and the cast responds with disbelief and laughter. Lucy calls him a blockhead, while others mock Charlie Brown, including his own dog, Snoopy. Charlie Brown puts an ornament on the tree. It tips over, and he yelps, I've killed it. Charlie Brown walks away in utter sadness, and the rest of the Peanuts gang soon realize their hurtful treatment of Charlie Brown. They pick up the tree and head to Charlie Brown's house. When they arrive, they see Snoopy's doghouse, full of lights, tinsels, and other decorations. The gang removes Snoopy's decorations and place them on that sad, lonely, feeble tree Charlie Brown picked out. Then Christmas magic happens. That tree transforms into something sturdy and magnificent. Next, the Peanuts gang gathers around the tree and starts humming, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. When he hears singing, Charlie Brown walks out of his house to investigate the commotion. When the gang parts from the tree, Charlie Brown stares in disbelief at the transformation of the Christmas tree. The gang shouts, Merry Christmas, Charlie Brown! And the episode closes with everyone singing the hymn. I've seen this special so many times that I can recall every scene like a favorite memory. And because of that, I always smile when I sing Hark the Herald Angels Sing at our family's candlelight Christmas Eve church service. We always sit on the right side of our church, near the front, me and Wendy, Grace and Allie and Connor. That is, and will always be, a great memory for me. So will the Charlie Brown Christmas special and his tree. His tree represents the best hopes for humanity, for us. We see it in the show and we hear it in the hymn at the end. Peace on earth and mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled. Joyful all ye nations rise, join the triumph of the skies. With angelic hosts proclaim, Christ is born in Bethlehem. By ourselves, we are fragile and we do make a lot of mistakes. But when we gather with friends and family during the Christmas season, we become hopeful and we do feel surrounded by love, unconditional love. And there is no greater gift than to be loved unconditionally on earth as we are in heaven.